If you are interested in wildlife photography, video and sound recording from a hide, then perhaps this film will be of interest. The boat behind me is the MV Wild Sky. I run trips to see and feed the white-tailed eagles that are resident on Loch Harport here on the Isle of Skye in Scotland. Each trip I throw a fish from the boat and one of the eagles swoops down, collects it, then flies off to land in a tree or on a rock to eat it. Or during the breeding season, it will take the fish to its chicks. I have photographed and filmed the eagles from the boat many times, but the one image I'm unable to get from the boat is a close-up of the bird eating the fish. So that's what this project is all about. The image I am after is one I've imagined for quite some time, and that is of a white-tailed eagle sitting on a seaweed-covered branch or rock with its talons gripping the fish while eating it. So this is what I will be trying to create. I will go through many of the decisions I've made with respect to hide choice, its setup and positioning, props and baiting the scene, equipment that I will be using, and so on. Hopefully, there will be lots of useful information to help you with your hide projects. So let's get to it. Hi, I'm Stephen Hopper. I am the owner and skipper of Wild Sky Boat Trips and the director of a new company called Nature by Media Limited. I set the company up to create nature-based film productions filmmaking workshops and training. More about that in future videos. If you're interested in the boat trips, then please visit wildskyboattrips.com. That's sky with an E. Okay, so I'm now in the area where I will be setting up the hide. When starting a project like this, there are a few things to consider. The first is, and this might sound a bit obvious, but is the animal I'm interested in actually likely to visit whilst I'm in the hide? Now, most animals have a territory they roam around or places where they regularly visit to feed, mate, and clean themselves. Now, these behaviors, amongst others, will become more apparent with time spent working on field craft. After watching the eagles, I know that they often perch in the nearby trees and also regularly fly over this area looking for food. Now, otters hunt for fish along the shore here and eagles will often take the fish from the otter or pick over what has been left. So placing a fish here should look quite natural to an eagle. Now, once I've worked out the rough area where the hide will be, the next step is to gain permission from the landowner, which I've already done. Another consideration is which direction will the light be coming from during the time I'm in the hide. In this case, I will be in the hide before sunrise until after sunset. Now this gives me options as well as creates problems. Now in this case, the sun rises behind this hill and doesn't clear it until mid-morning. The relationship between the positions of the hide, bait and the direction of light will determine whether I will be able to get backlit, frontlit or sidelit images. If I place the bait over here, then the sun will be behind the subject, creating backlit images in the morning and sidelit in the afternoon. But if I place my bait here, then I will get different lighting conditions. It's for this reason I usually bait more than one spot at a time. The second issue is weather. Now in the UK, most of the prevailing winds are either westerly or southerly. So in this case, the wind and rain will blow straight off the sea directly onto the hide windows. Now this means that I will need several windows so I could choose which one offers my lens the most protection 
as I don't want rain to blow straight onto the lens. And also, this means I will need plenty of securing pegs and guide ropes to make sure the hide doesn't blow away or flap about too much in the wind. Another consideration that is relevant here is the maximum tide height. If the hide was just here for a day or two, then I could possibly get away with placing it lower down the shore. But because it will be here for several weeks, I need to place it just above the highest strand line, which is here at my feet, or the hide will be flooded around the time of the spring tides. The next consideration is the background. Now, I generally want uncluttered background if possible. And the easiest way to achieve this is to have the background as far away as possible. I also want to avoid distractions in the images, such as litter on the shore or vegetation between the subject and the lens. Now, just a blade of grass can spoil a shot. Now, some of these things, like litter and vegetation, need to be sorted out before I sight the hide, for reasons I will go into later. Now, the next consideration are the props. Now, in this case, the log or branch or the rocks the eagle will be perched on. Now, having looked around the shore, I found a few that are appealing. Now, trees are often beached on the foreshore and seaweed then grows on them or is thrown over them by the high tides. I will move these into the best place with respect to the hide, the background, and the bait. Now again, this I do before setting up the hide. Now another consideration is how I will access the hide. There are generally two ways to do this. One we call the walk to method. Now this is where two people walk to the hide. One enters the hide whilst the other person places the bait and walks away. At a pre-arranged time, the other person walks back to the hide, and when they reach it, you get out, and then both of you leave. The reason we do this is it's believed most animals can't count. And if they see the other person leave, then they believe the area is safe again. The other method is the one I will mostly be using and that is to access the hide before dawn and leave after sunset. Easy to do in midwinter. This method can work better in this case because we also have ravens here and it has been shown they can count to nine. So the walk-in method won't work with them unless 10 people go to the hide and nine leave. My chosen method can be a bit more hazardous as I will be walking over rough ground in the dark to reach the hide. I usually need a very low power light or if the sky is clear and the moon is out, then sometimes that's all I need. It's a very good idea to familiarize yourself with the route before starting the hide sessions and approach as quietly as possible. The bait I will be using will be fish caught locally, which I will be nailing to the branch to stop birds simply flying off with it. I also intend to use roadkill that I will lay on the ground. Now baiting the site for a few days before I go into the hide gives the birds time to find it and also to allow themselves to settle down. By using roadkill, I hope to attract other species such as fox, golden eagle, buzzard, hooded crows, and the raven. On one occasion, I managed to film a robin feeding on a deer carcass. So there's always the chance for surprises. Okay, so now I have spoken about the, the site, let's talk about the hide itself. Many of the purpose-built photographer hides that you can find on the internet are simply not suited to the extreme conditions we often get here on the Isle of Skye during winter. For example, pop-up hides can be flattened by the weight of snow settling on them, or they can be destroyed in a gale. And that's what happened to this hide. 
The wind even snapped the poles. Now it only had two places you could rope it down from and even then it wasn't very sturdy. So it didn't last long at all. Now usually I build a bespoke hide. I use a strong metal frame or a wooden frame and then I cover that with a layer of netting and plastic sheet. It is then completely covered with vegetation. What I end up with is a very sturdy, waterproof, secretive hide that is blended into its surroundings. And at some point I intend to film and share with you how I go about building one of these hides. Now the problem with these bespoke hides is that they take quite a while to build and are difficult to reuse somewhere else. So for this project, I decided to buy one. So what features am I looking for in a ready-made hide? Firstly, and most important, it needs to be sturdy, easily pegged and roped down. It needs to be waterproof. Now I'll be using very expensive camera equipment like this, and that needs to keep that dry. Also, it can be bad for your health to sit wet all day in freezing temperatures. Plus, I just don't want drips of water falling on my head or kit all day. Now, it needs to be large enough to seat two people. Now, it was my intention to set this hide up for paying guests, but not so important at the moment due to the COVID restrictions. Now, it needs to have as many lens ports as possible to give me flexibility on how I use it. It needs to be quiet in the wind, no flapping fabric, that will ruin my sound recordings. And it needs to have a built-in ground sheet that, as it may be used on boggy ground, and again, it doesn't make sense to sit wet all day. Also, this is an area that has ticks, which a ground sheet will offer protection from. Now, the danger with ticks is Lyme's disease, which I certainly don't want to get. And as you know, prevention is better than a cure. Also, the ground sheet will help to keep rodents out and help to keep the hide just that little bit warmer. Now, it needs to be inconspicuous. Eagles can be wary of man-made structures, so better to have something camouflaged. Also, a well-camouflaged hide may help to prevent people from discovering it. It needs to be made of thick fabric so that it's dark inside. This will mean you cannot see me moving about inside the hide and also modern equipment usually comes with screens that light up and we don't want that light to be seen outside. Now it needs to be well built. I want it to last. I hate throwing money away like I did on this thing. Now it was much more difficult to find something that ticked all the boxes than I thought it would be. And what I finally settled on may surprise you. It is the Cyprinus Typhoon Max Height Bivy. Yes, not a hide at all, but a fisherman's bivy. I knew when I bought it that I would need to modify it to suit my needs. So this is the bivy before I modify it. It can be carried like a backpack and comes in this well-made bag. I wouldn't describe it as lightweight, but I believe I could carry it for quite some distance on its own. So with it, we have the, the ground sheet. We have the, the front window. We have the main hide. An extra piece of uh, plastic for the front window. There's two adjustable poles. And then a bag of very high quality strong pegs. So I'll go ahead and I'll put the hide up and, uh, and then talk you through uh, some of the features. First thing we do after taking everything out of the bag is we open the, uh, the frame out and these poles actually clip together. There's five of them. Then uh, it's very straightforward. We simply fan out the hide like that. Now we have these uh, poles here that uh, slot onto 
the frame, and then there's adjusters here, which then can tension the front out. So there's three of these poles. Push them all in. And then pull out the front. Clip in the strap. The bottom of the front door is uh, velcroed to the, uh, the ground sheet. All the rest of it is zipped in. So the door can be unzipped from above. Or from below. Meaning that you could have a, a camera low positioned here or high positioned just there. Also in the front panel are two side windows that can be opened up similar to the side panel there uh, the the other four windows Sold separately is what they call the skull cap. Now this is uh, simply a simple sheet of fabric which throws over the hide. It has these three poles which simply slot into the existing ones in the front. And then the rest of the sheet is held down with these brackets that are supplied that uh, we fit to each one of the five poles around the sides. So I'll go ahead and do that. We simply tighten it up. Now once in place, there's a, uh, a Velcro strap that feeds through the slot. We pull it tight and then velcro it in place. And we do that around all the five uh, posts. Now, as you can see, these flaps would allow me to make a waterproof canopy over the, the window. Simply by using uh, a couple of these poles, I'd have to make some eyelets in the uh, flap, slide that over the, the pole, and then the guide rope would simply then go down to the ground to hold this firmly out. This is what I will be doing with this skull cap. Uh, coming up to the end of my fourth session and that's a fourth, fourth full day of 12 hours now, as I mentioned before I was getting into the hide um, around about six o'clock in the morning 
uh, so it's pitch black and then I've been leaving five to six uh, there sort of each night pitch black again now uh, in some ways it's been really productive and in other ways very disappointing so the disappointing part is we've had no eagle so far uh, apart from a pair of uh, golden eagle that uh, flew past now uh, the upside the good thing was we've had plenty of fox activity so that's uh, well a good thing and a bad thing because it was coming in I'm getting a few uh, shots of it but basically it was taking away the bait that I've laid out to try and attract the crows in. Now the reason I want the crows in is because that activity um, on the, the food will kind of alert the eagles that there's food there. Now without that, what I'm really relying on is the eagle to fly over the, the site, look down and manage to see the fish nailed to the tree, which, uh, you know, it will happen but it's just whether it happens, you know, over the next, might take weeks for me to actually get that exact shot. Whereas if I bait the site with uh, roadkill uh, and also parts of deer that I've been uh, managing to get from um, uh, a chap on Sky who culls them as part of the, the annual cull. So uh, I've been putting those bits out, but um, yes, the fox has been, uh, sort of taking most of it and the, cre the crows are not getting a look in so very disappointing but it's it's been a good uh, good four sessions I mean the, the temperature has been uh, well below zero uh, so as you can see I'm uh, fully kitted out in uh, this it's a thermal uh, suit for made for fishermen and uh, this is fantastic this thing because you, you can actually uh, you can actually get your feet in as well and uh, another, uh, what turned out to be a fantastic thing, um, are these things, which are the hot hands hand warmers. Now they, in these, there's uh, two sachets uh, in a pack. You open the pack, take the sachet out, and the oxygen gets to the sachet, and then starts to get warm. Now uh, what I've been doing is um, dropping a sachet Seem to have lost one. Yep, there it is. So I've been dropping a sachet into my gloves, which, uh, and also just into the end of the the end of the suit, just to keep them um, handy when I've got my gloves off and so on. And also, I've been putting a pair in the end of this suit, so that's been keep, keep, well keeping my feet. Uh, toasty warm but also drying them and that's a that's a bit of a, a, a tip for you and then whenever you're coming uh, walking to these sort of you know sessions and whether you, I mean I've got well in uh, Wellington boots on um, but also this will happen if you've just got normal hiking shoes is your your feet get damp you know the socks will actually get damp now when you're sitting in the hide that those damp socks will just wick that heat away out of your feet and you'll end up in pain you know especially with the minus temperatures we've got here so um, a good trick is to use one of these <laughs> it's turned out to be fantastic but another one is just to bring some dry socks with you um, and then you can put the dry socks on as soon as you get into the hide and then leave the wellingtons or your boots off um, that way it's uh, you tend to your feet keep dry and therefore stay that little bit warmer. Now the other things that we've been getting, um, we've had quite a few waders, curlew and things like this and um, the uh, otter has, uh, has been passed as well. Didn't get very good uh, footage of that because it's quite, quite a distance. But uh, yeah, there's always things when you're doing a hide session like this, there's always those little surprises. I mean, I expected to get fox, but not every day. And um, yesterday it was seven o'clock in the morning, so it was still really too dark for the cameras. Uh, which, incidentally, I'll just show you what I'm using. So I've got the got the uh, Panasonic EVA One, 
and uh, for the video and I've got the Canon 5D Mark III as well as the GH5 that I'm filming this on at the moment. So as I was saying, the, um, the Fox uh, arrived at 7 o'clock in the morning and it was just too dark for any of these cameras to pick anything up. And uh, it went over, collected a fish and um, laid down in front of the hide about 4 metres away and ate it. Really frustrating. I mean, great that the fish, should, they, sorry, the, the, the fox is actually getting a good meal, but you know, I'd rather it have come during daylight hours and actually get some footage of it, which is it's done a lot of today. And so it's been uh, been a good day that way for the fox. But yes, as I say, very disappointing for the eagle. So. Uh, yeah, I keep still looking out just to see if anything, there's any movement. Now I did have a, um, a buzzard today, but again that was a little bit frustrating because the fox had picked up uh, some of the bait and then moved it down onto the beach. And that's what the buzzard landed on instead of coming to the other bits of bait that were closer to the hide. So I couldn't actually see the buzzard even though I knew it was there. So uh, again, a bit frustrating. It's always a good idea, um, you know, to, to arrange your bait in a way to think, well, if something comes for it, will I, you know, will it move it into a bad shot or, you know, and you, you try to, um, at least I try to think, pre-think those things and then place the bait in exactly the, the, the place that either will give me the nicest image or, or sort of will encourage the animal to stay you know instead of just grabbing and running but um, this time it's, uh, it's a bit of yeah it's a bit of a failure I mean strangely enough the buzzard actually landed on the fish and just used it as, as a perch but uh, didn't attempt to eat it but uh, a few of these shots I'll actually include in uh, in a sort of a final to, the, to this and um, this isn't the final day um, final session I mean the hides it's all set up it's been an absolute fantastic hide as you can see I've got acres of room and um, yeah it's been really sturdy there are a few bits that rattle around and, and flap which is a little bit disappointing and some bits that I might sort of attempt to, to modify a little bit so I can just tension those places up because uh, it's a funny thing that when you're in the hide, you sort of you, you want to be able to listen to every every nuance of sound out there, you know, just to pick up where the things are coming. And uh, if you've got a flapping hide, well, that's you know very annoying. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, I really love doing these these hide sessions. I mean, you, to some they're a bit it's a bit odd, you know, sitting in a hide in the freezing cold weather for 12 hours just on the, the off chance that whatever it is that you're wanting to to photograph turns up but there's something about working in hides that just draws me in and and keeps me coming to do it and they, they do take a lot of effort to set up and you know and, and to get to I mean I've been walking you know with a low powered torch um, over the you know the ice covered ground and that's a bit you know iffy but yeah it's all part of the fun you know for, for someone like me so um, yeah hide work is something I really enjoy I'm just trying to be a little bit quiet just in case there's anything around but... okay well I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video um, yeah, I do apologise in some places the narration was a little bit slow. That's the first time I've used a teleprompter. Not got one now, but uh, yeah, it's the first time I've used one in the other parts. But uh, we'll live and learn. So uh, I hope you enjoy these uh, little clips that I've actually got from sitting in the hide this, uh, this session. Okay, and bye for now.